Hey everyone, it's Mr. Marcus. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well and I uh, hope you guys aren't going too crazy. Um, I know it's a little weird right now and it's definitely strange not coming to church on Sunday, but um, right now it's kind of best to just listen to the president and the governor and, uh, you know, just uh, stay, you know, just kind of stay home, you know, wash your hands and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, hopefully it won't won't be very much longer till everything kind of goes back to normal. But um, till then, I'm gonna teach you like this. So, you know, um, uh, uh, just kind of a note to the parents. Um, all the worship and uh, and the talk about videos that we usually do for children's church, um, they're all gonna be on uh, on the the church website at uh, triparkway.com. Um, so, you know, you can either pause pause the video here, or you can um, just kind of wait until afterward uh, to go through them. You know, it's, you know, whatever you guys feel, feel like doing. Um, but with that said, um, let's get into it. So, um, okay. um, so our lesson today is going to be about right living. Um, and uh, one question I kind of want to want you to keep in your mind, and uh, I kind of want you to keep thinking about is what is right living, and what does it mean to uh, live right and delighting in right living? Um, and uh, the verses I'm gonna I'm going to be reading through is going to be um, Psalm 119, 9 through sixteen. And those of you at home, you guys, uh, if you guys have have Bibles, great. Um, if you guys feel like reading along, uh, you know, I, I highly encourage it. But um, if not, that's fine too. Um, just kind of a note uh, again to the parents. Um, I'm going to be reading out of the New International Version. Um, you may have a different one at home, but um, I, I chose the NIV specifically because it's a lot less uh, a lot less wordy. It's um, maybe a little easier for children to understand. So, you know, um, just kind of note that. Um, so, anyway, um, uh, our our main idea is going to be in uh, Psalm one nineteen, but the verse itself is going to be in Daniel five. Um, so, you know, um, those of you at home, kind of. Put a bookmark, uh, you know, stick your finger there if you need to. Um, you know, we're just, we're going to come back to it, so. Um, okay, um, so, uh, Daniel 5, I'm going to give you guys, uh, I'm going to give you guys a little background so that you guys can uh, take time to find, find that in your own Bibles at home. Um, uh, Daniel, uh, a long time ago, the Bible uh, the Bible talks about this guy named Daniel. I'm sure you guys have heard it, heard the uh, the Bible stories about Daniel and the lions. Well, it's the same guy <laughs> that we're going to be talking about. Um, and uh, around this time in Daniel's life, um, Daniel and his friends and his family um, had their nation had been conquered by uh, by another kingdom. And at this point, Daniel is is um, He's off in a different land. He's he's um, he's away from his family, his friends. He feels alone, but still, Daniel purposed in his heart that he's still going to serve God, and that God is faithful, and he is going to follow the word of God. Um, so, um, and because of that, uh, because he chose to follow the word of God, God gave him wisdom and knowledge and and. Uh, and and because um, because God gave him knowledge, um, God made him uh, one of the most powerful people in that foreign kingdom. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, read in Daniel five. Uh, I'm going to start in verse one. Um, and uh, so uh, Daniel five one says. King Belshazzar was having a great banquet for thousands, uh, for a thousand of his nobles, 
and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking, he gave orders to bring the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar his father had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives and his concubines, might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his concubines and his wives and, uh, did drink from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and wood. <clears throat> So here, uh, so here we kind of set the scene a little. The Bible kind of sets the scene a little bit. Um, here, uh, King Belshazzar, which was the king of Babylon at the time, uh, he was kind of um, kind of reveling in the spoils of war. He was, uh, you know, having this giant feast with all of the all of his uh, all of his friends, his knights, uh, or his, uh, his the nobles and his wives and and whatnot. And uh, you know he kind of he kind of uh, kind of thought you know um, you know this you know this wine's good but I really need something better to drink it out of so he he kind of uh, he's you know what there's those uh, there's those gold cups and stuff from from we took from that place in Jerusalem um, he's like bring them over here I'm the king I need them more than you know they're just over there just collecting dust so. You know, why not bring them over here um, so they could have some use? Um, but the thing was, as the Bible says, these were specifically for God. These were the goblets and stuff that were in the temple. These were specifically for God. And this, and uh, you know, some of you, <laughs> some of you that have heard the story before, or kind of read on a little further, you kind of know that. That's not necessarily a good thing to do. <laughs> um, it would it would be kind of like um, okay, so it would be kind of like um, when I was a kid, uh, my mom my mom had a specific set of plates and cups and knives and forks and stuff, um, and and uh, she she loved these 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 uh this the set of silverware and stuff specifically because they were expensive and because they were they were precious to her and i, I believe they were a gift from her her wedding um uh and uh she only brought out her fine china um on i think it was on uh thanksgiving and christmas those were the only two days in the entire year that she would let us even touch them um, because they were, again, they were so expensive and they, were, they break extremely easily. Um, but um, if I would have, you know, if I would have, if my mom would have woke up one day and I was, you know, I was, I was at the table with, uh, you know, eating eating a grilled cheese sandwich on one of her, uh, one of her, <laughs> one of her plates of china, she would have killed me because it was so precious to her. It was so, uh, you know, it was so expensive. It was it was something that was dear to her, um, you know. But if my mom would have done that, like if she would have been angry at me, how much more is God? Ang do you think God is angry at Belshazzar for taking something that is his, for taking something that had a spe that a specific purpose in the temple, and yet Belshazzar is using it just like any other cup, like a plastic cup? Um, so let's go on and let's keep reading. Um, and then verse five says, suddenly the fingers of a man appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and he was so frightened that his knees knocked together and his legs gave way. And so now we, uh, now we see what, what's, you know, what, what's happening here. Um, 
you know, after you know, after God sees what's what's happening to his his specific um, to his to his goblets and things that had a specific purpose in the temple, uh, God's like, you know, uh, you know what? Like, I've had enough of this, and so God literally carves and writes something into the very walls of the king's palace, and obviously, <laughs> the king is terrified. Obviously, he's, he's, uh, it's, uh, the Bible says the king's face is pale, uh, like, it, his knees knocked together, and his legs gave way, and so, um, as the Bible said before, um, he and his friends were, were worshiping and praising these, these other gods, these idols, these uh, gods of, of gold and silver and gods of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Um, and, you know, uh, that, was, that was his own decision. But once he saw, once he physically saw something else that he had never seen before, then he's actually terrified. Um, and so, um, so let's see what his reaction is. In verse 7, the king called out for enchanters, astrologers, divi and diviners to be brought and said to the, said to the, uh, sent to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads the writing uh, and tells me what it means will be clothed in purple and have a gold necklace around his neck and he will be made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. Then, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, here we see, uh, see we, here we see the king's reaction to that. Uh, once we see, we, once he knows that there's something he's never seen before and he, there's a message engraved in his very walls and he wants desperately, he won't, desperately wants to know what, what it means and he, what it says. And so he calls every single person, all of his astrologers, all of his wise men, all of his, um, all the people that look at stars, like every, all of his magicians and enchanters, every single person he can possibly think of to come and try to interpret what this message means, and he, he even goes so far as to say, he's like, if anybody, like in my entire kingdom, if anybody knows what this means, if anybody can tell me what it is, I will set them up with the most expensive clothes. I will put uh, a gold jewel necklace on their, uh, around their neck. I'll, like, I'll make them the third most powerful person, most powerful person in my kingdom. Then, um, verse 8 says, Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. So King Belshazzar became even more terrified, and his face grew more pale, and his nobles were baffled. So here... This is kind of a desperate situation for King Belshazzar. He, you know, he, he searched every single person he knew of in his entire kingdom, and no one had the answers. No one had, no, nobody on earth, had, in his own mind, nobody on earth had no idea what this message was. And so he was even more desperate. He was more terrified because he's like, what am I going to do? Like... God sent me a message, and I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Um, so, in verse 10, when the king was in, in, uh, in, the, middle of, in the middle of, kind of in a pity party, kind of uh, struggling to fi figure out what he was going to do, uh, verse 10 says, The queen, hearing the voices of the king and his nobles, came into the banquet hall and said, O king, live forever. Don't be alarmed, and don't look so pale. There is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him. In the time of your father, he was found to have insight 
intelligence, and wisdom like that of the gods. King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, I say, appointed him chief of the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and diviners. This man, Daniel, whom the king called Belteshazzar, was found to have a keen mind and knowledge and understanding, and also the ability to interpret dreams, to explain riddles, and to solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. So here, the king finally, or the queen, <laughs> rather, uh, finally uh, hears the commotion in the banquet hall, and you know, uh, everyone's kind of, the king is kind of freaking out, and everybody's trying to figure out what this thing means. And the queen comes comes in the banquet hall, and she's like, she's like, king, like you remember, like I I remember your when your dad was king, like he had he had this guy named Daniel. He was, you know, he was he was over. All of these people. He was, he, was, <laughs> he was in charge of everyone here. He was, he was smarter far than anyone else because he had wisdom. He had, um, he had the knowledge and understanding to do all of these different things. Go call for Daniel. Like none of, these, none of these guys have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Call for Daniel. He knows. Um, like Daniel will tell you what this means. So, um, and finally, we're gonna uh, we're gonna skip down to verse twenty-two and see what and see what the the message says. Um, um, okay, uh, verse twenty-two says, "You, um, O Belshazzar, have not humbled yourself, though you knew all this. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of Heaven." You had brought the goblets from his temple and brought them to you and your nobles and your wives and your concubines and drank wine from them. You praised the gods of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which cannot see, cannot hear, and or cannot understand. But... You did not honor the God who holds in his hands your life and all your ways. Therefore, he sent the hand that wrote the inscription. This is the inscription that was written. Mine, mine, tikel, parson. This is what these words mean. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. You have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Yeah. So, you know, Daniel's finally telling him straight out, it's like, King, you're worshiping these, you know, these, these idols, these, you know, this, giant piece of rock this you know this this piece of brass and and you know a wood that half of it you chopped down chopped down a tree and made an idol and the half you the other half you threw into the fire you know and yet you ignored the god of heaven you ignored the true like true and living god that made everything here the only God that gave you everything that you have, you know, still you took what is his and you drank wine from it. You took what was in the temple, what was holy and what was specifically for gods. You knew what you were doing and still you did what you wanted to do. And because of this, God will take everything that he has given you. God has given you a huge, sprawling kingdom. He's given you land. He's given you money. And still, 
you did not honor him in this. He's given you all of these things, and he knew, and now he knows that you are only going to do what you want to do. So because of that, he will take everything he's given you, and he will give it to someone else. So here, um, this is kind of a... This, this is kind of kind of a warning to kind of, um, you know, uh, to kind of honor God and what He does. And you know, the reason the reason Daniel five is in here to kind of be a is to kind of be kind of be a sign on what not to do, essentially. Um, and now we're gonna go to Psalm one nineteen. 9 through 16, and uh, now we're going to see the answer of how to live right, how to, how to live not like Belshazzar, but how to live how God wants us to live. So here it says, in, starting in verse 9, um, it says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to to your word to seek you I seek you with all my heart do not let me stray from your commands I have hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you praise be to you O God teach me your decrees with my lips I recount the laws that come from your mouth I rejoice in following your statues, as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts, and I consider your ways. I delight in your decrees, and I will not neglect your word. So here, Psalm 119 kind of lays it out for us. Um, Psalm 119 says that... Um, if we want our way to be pure, if we want to follow God's commandments, if we want to have a life that is pleasing to God, then we need to follow the word of God. So if we want, yeah, uh, if we want a life that is pleasing to us, uh, that is pleasing to God, then we need we, then we need to listen to what God tells us to do. Um, and here I want to, I kind of want to challenge you, challenge you guys to, um, to get into the Word of God, to, to read your Bible, and to spend time in prayer. Because how are you going to, how are you going to know what God wants for your life if you don't spend time reading God's word. I mean, the Bible is how God speaks to us. That's, that's how we know what he wants for our lives. Um, so, I, again, I want to challenge you guys to spend time reading your Bible, and spend time studying your Bible, and seeing what God wants for your life. And even, and I understand, it's, it. It's hard. I understand. Um, sometimes it's it's hard to keep concentration. And it, you know, I you know, it's easy to get distracted. I understand. Like I was exactly the same way as a kid. Um, like I would sit down and try to read, and immediately start thinking of something else, anything else. But take time. Just please, just take time and read your Bible. Yeah, and take time. And, and and spend time in prayer with God. Even if it's uh, even if it's a verse a day, just you need to start somewhere. Please just take time and and find out what God has for your lives. So, um, with that said, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this out here in a word of prayer. Um, after this, uh, after this, I guess your your parents can kind of uh, let you know what crafts you have for today, and uh, you know, um, after that, you know, 
uh, you guys are good to go. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, end with a word of prayer. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I, uh, I come to you in prayer. I want to thank you for letting me teach your children, God. I just pray that you would, you would um, be with us today, God. I pray that you would... Uh, that you would help us learn from our lesson today, God, that you would, that you would um, help us draw closer to you every single day, God, and that you would, you would um, help us dig deeper every single day, God, and that you would, you would help us uh, keep our path pure, God. God, I just pray that you would be with each and every one of each and every one of these children that are watching today, God, I pray that you would, um, you would uh, keep them, God, and that you would, you would light a fire in their hearts that they would um, yearn for you more and more every day, God. I pray that you would, you would bless us, God, and that you would, you would keep us um, until the next time that we're able to see each other again, God. God, I give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, thank you so much for listening. All right, you guys have a nice day. God bless.